Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Building Your Business right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Annie Gottwald. Well, you know, talk about kind of the cosmic two by four. COVID happened, she became single, and she has seven children. And not only that, her spouse took the business along with him. She had one month to find a job to figure out a way to monetize income and support the family that was relying on her and she didn't quite know what to do. So instead of panicking, she decided to hit a pause button, something I suggest everybody to do before you react. There is always a reason why a door closes. And before you go rushing around trying the handle of every other door, it's time to pause so you can recognize the door that you need to open. And she looked around to see uh, how she could monetize things and her eldest daughter they started a conversation of what was going on in the world and what skills she uh, and um, and Annie could both bring to the table and they came up with a brilliant idea and the idea is to share your resume on a reel in other words a video resume we know that business people today really don't have the time to go for all these pieces of paper and that basically if you haven't got them by the first paragraph you haven't got them at all they want to know who you are um what's your vibe you know how you're coming across confident and you know words on a page can't always do that that's something they need to refer to after they've looked at your reel and gone I like this person's attitude I like this person's vibe I like this person's aura this looks like a friendly put together person. So what does she do? She started my resume reel to help 20 million unemployed workers that are needing help at the present moment. And uh, brilliant. I love it. I love it when we get somebody redirecting, a door closes, <laughs> you not only opened up another door, you opened up the window, you opened up the roof, everything. This is a brilliant <laughs> idea. And one that is very, very needed right now. Right, Annie? I think so. And thank you. Yes, it is very needed. I think more than ever, when we have these overpopulated pools of candidates coming in for a job, you need to be able to stand out. Mm. And how do you stand out when you only have a piece of paper to work with? You need something that's your voice so people can hear you, they can see you, they can hear you say it in your own way. And then back in to say, oh, I like this person, just like what you said. This type of person is what I'm looking for to fit this team. And let me see what they've done. Yes. Yeah, the resume is, an, is, a, is the next stage, isn't it? You know, I like yes. who they are. Now, are they qualified enough for the job? Right? Yes. Yes. You are spot on. Because if you look at LinkedIn and how everybody's networking, mm. they like what they see. They like the post, just like what you said. I like who you are. Now, let me go see your resume. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, we even say to people today, it's, it, you know, um, I'm, I'm always saying to people, you've got to have a website. You know, your oh. website is, mm -hmm. is, is, is that um, it's, you can post away like crazy on social media, but the algorithm is going to push it down. And you always mm -hmm. want to have a reference where people can go back, whether it's a one page or a two page resume on who you are, what you're, you know, capable, not, not a resume written type thing. That is that document that they get sent and look over your past experience. But, you know, a, a website that kind of represents who you are. It's your landing page. It's your yeah. book. And so people mm -hmm. can go there. They can see the other interests. They maybe can see some photographs are going along with it. They get the real gives them a snapshot of who they are. And now they can go in deeper to understand exactly how they can fit in. When that interview happens, it's really just a, a conclusion, right? Oh my gosh, and, yes. Yeah. I completely uh, agree with you. Yes. And like what you're talking about with that landing page and going into the deeper parts of who are you personally, that completely transmits to the job because the type of person that you're showing up as in life to your children or spouse or friends, I mean, that's the type of person you really show up as at work too. You might put a little bit more gusto, 
and certain things, but that's such a great idea. I love that. And yes, the real does give that tidbit that yes. kind of, you know, opens the, the door top of what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> it opens that door. Uh, you've got, you know, everybody clamoring to try and get that one job. And, yes. uh, you know, as an employee, and I've been an employee, employer and an employee, um, what I'm looking for is somebody, can I work with them? Mm -hmm. right um is yeah. this person that's receptive to ideas yes. um is this person creative you know yes. that can come up with ideas is this person personable and will the clients like them yes right? but if you don't get on with them why would you assume your clientele or other colleagues will get on with them right and you're right because when we come because i used to be a hiring manager too when you have an internal candidate, it's so much easier to understand, okay, I'm going to take Sue or Bob from this role because they're great leading people in this way. And now I know what they do. I already know the type of person that they are. So I'm going to set them in this promoted job within the same company. And what my resume reel does, and like you're talking about that website, is it can give us as that hiring manager a glimpse of, who would this person be as an internal employee? And when you look at just a resume and getting keywords and all those practices that everybody's trying to throw out there, you're missing some of the points where people are hiring people. And in yes. order to hire a person, you need to hire them for the team that they're going to be in. So you have to understand that type of person. And just like what you're talking about with this website in a reel, that lets them show you, here's who I am. And this is what I'm all about. So they can see you in that position. So yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And that's really what I was trying to get at with this is to help people show that and a recruiter see that before they even have to make a phone call because mm -hmm. they can click on it on the resume. Yes. Yes. That's the important thing. As an employer, when I was <laughs> looking to hire people and I've been in the restaurant business, in the clothing business, um, in a few businesses in my life. And I would always look to people that were personable. You know, a, they always say, oh, no, you shouldn't mit, mix uh, personal and business together. I disagree. If I can't have you in my home, do I want you in my business? Now, you mm -hmm. wear different hats at different stages, you know, because the boss may invite you to the home doesn't mean suddenly a buddy buddy, you know, but that means that they like you enough to invite you right. to your home. And that's where you really want to be. You want to be in a job where the boss really looks at you as a friend. You know, you want it as a, as a boss, we really want to build a family, whether mm -hmm. it's 10, 20, or 100,000 as Amazon has, you know, it's, yeah. it's treating people as a family that they count. They're not just such so-and-so, so-and-so. And you want to have people that are going to have synergy together. And mm -hmm. I'm a true colors coach, which is the four personality traits. And every single personality tra uh, trait has an importance in the job realm. Very, very important that everything is represented in order for you to see the whole picture. But it's also teaching people how to have a voice in that, mm -hmm. in that thing. No, no, you're wrong. I do it this way. No, that doesn't work that way at all. Right? It is, right. I see it from this side. You see mm -hmm. it from that side, you see it from this side, you see it from that side. Now we're looking at the whole picture. And I think that is what you're doing with your reel. You're giving somebody, you know, the person, the personality of the person, how confident mm -hmm. they are, the way they look, the way they dress, the way they come across. The resume mm -hmm. themselves is giving their credentials. If they go to their site, they're going to see a bit more about them. And right. now they're going to know where they fit in. Or oh, I, mm -hmm. this is a personality trait I need here. I'm missing that link and they've got a full picture, but you've also got to make sure when you go for the job, you are the same person that was on the reel. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy that you brought that up because authenticity and videotaping is so, so crucial and showing up as the person that you are. I mean, that's critical because you're going to see right through it or a really good recruiter or interviewer is going to see it. And when you're authentic and when you're that person who you really are and you stop and you make your own blooper reel, because we all know when you're making videos, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to start. But when you go, it's going to feel fake. And I think, again, like you were saying, that pause, if you can stop, hit pause, re-record mm -hmm. and pull in that authentic self, 
it's not only going to help that hiring manager figure out, wow, this is who this person is, but it's going to help you make sure you're getting the right role. Because yes, the most expensive thing is a company and a hiring manager is to get a wrong fit client or mm. candidate, right? Because we mm. bring them in, we teach them, we train them, and it's $30,000 easy. And then now we got to restart the process. But it's also not good for us as job seekers to find the wrong role. We're unhappy. Mm. And going back to that synergy piece, we're not only becoming a part of a company as a bunch of people, but that company itself has its own synergy as a personality and a culture. And for that to grow and thrive, just like you said, those four pieces coming together have to build that body. Yeah. So I'm so happy you brought that piece up because you said it so well that yes, this is building that personality of the company by selecting the right person first. And you yes. have to know what type of person they are. Thank you. I love that. That was so good. <laughs> You know, there are so many companies out there and there are an awful lot of them that get kind of too big and the, they lose connection. And we see this show, Undercover Boss, where yes. they go in and they work with the real people and they don't know who is who. And it is a wake up call for the boss. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they've been, I call them the ivory towers. You know, they've yeah. just, just uh, connected themselves so much from the foundation of what they were building. They're now up in this ivory tower and it's an illusionment. And all the people that are still keeping them up there are working, you know, the grindstone. And if you do not look at the janitor as being one of the most important people in your company, then you're not looking at your company right. Because when somebody walks into your business and it looks dirty, or, mm -hmm. you, you know, it hasn't been uh, cleaned well and you go into the bathrooms and you think, oh, my God, you know, where does this company spend its money on? Because it sure isn't cleansiness. <laughs> you immediately start doubting the company. So your receptionist, your janitor, before they even get there to you, the flashy CEO, it's they've got to go through all these other people. And if these other people don't feel a synergy with your company or, or it's just mm -hmm. a job, and they don't feel they're a part of it, they're not going to be able to represent that. Doesn't matter what words they say, their vibe right. isn't going to match it. So as a boss, we really do want people that want to be there because yeah. they're going to represent, they're going to you know, really stand up for their company in pride. So it's essential that we find the right fit because we mm -hmm. want people who look forward to coming to work. Yes. And, you know, you bring up such a good point with this, and there's a few things that you're making me think of. But the first one is really, I mean, one thing I teach my children is I'll always have $5, like when we go to a concert or, you know, we're somewhere that's a big area, like an airport. And when we see people who clean, I will tip them and say thank you because mm. I'll, they're helping me, you know, keep that facility clean. And being a mom of seven kids, I mean, one of my biggest things is it needs to be a clean bathroom. But I want them to understand and appreciate not only cleanliness, but every role that's there. And for mm. a parent, we need to set that example. Yes. So when you bring it back to the business that you're talking about, where we need to embrace and pay and respect that person that's our janitor all the way up to our CEO and remember that they're human, mm -hmm. we need to like something, if I can give a best practice and you just shared to a recruiting company who has tons of people that they're bringing in. The reason to pause and identify the type of person, not only for what they've done, but who they are, like what you just said, is because even if they're cleaning, they might have aspirations to become a sales rep, mm -hmm. or they might have aspirations in a, a wonderful photography you know, piece within their brain that they take great pictures that could in essence help later on down the business road. And you can come, you like connect with them, not only being a janitor, but ask them about those photographic moments that they mm -hmm. had, you know, over the weekend, which brings value to the role. And when they have value in their role, even if they're cleaning or a cook, they're going to be better at their job. They're going to be more joyous and bring in that harmony and be that right fit again. So you are just bringing out such great points. I mean, <laughs> like that's wonderful, but yes, we have to value, but we have to know how to recruit. Right. Just to put the shoe on the other foot, you know, I'm looking for a job. And at the present moment, um, so many people are looking for a job. And obviously, there aren't that many jobs out there right now because of, of the COVID lockdown and the reconstruction that's going on. And so you might be trained in this field, but your field right now, you can't work in. 
you know, because maybe mm -hmm. it's too physical public related, you need to be versatile and go into other fields. You want to know who you're going to just as much, you know, who do that, who are they representative? Of? It's a brilliant idea to have each of the company that is looking to hire to have a real themselves. This is yes. what the company stands for. This is the mission of the company. This is the kind of person that we're looking for. This is the environment that you're coming to. Because then people are going to go, you know, as, as much as I want the job, it's not the company for me, or I want that company. So yeah. I'm, you know, both feet forward on this one. Um, it's a two way street, isn't it? It's not just the one person and the other person lording over them whether they get the job or not. You really want to look as if there, that, that there's a good synergy and relationship there for them yes. to have a longevity and grow together. Yes, yes. And I agree with your point about each company having a reel because Chick fil A, there's a franchise here in Columbus, Ohio, that they did put in, put in your video for why you for this role. Mm. And if you think about it, Having one resume reel, the whole purpose of it is to do that inspection of yourself mm. to know what will I say and how will I say it in 30 to 60 seconds. It's easier for me to ask you, hey, what mm. are you good at and help you pinpoint it? But for me, when I want to do it for myself, that's hard. Yes. So when you create this reel and you put it on like your social media site, that's a one fit for all. But when you're talking like you are, where these institutions would have their own, that allows them to like the keyword in our resumes per application, make a video per role. So when you are switching roles from say military and how do I bring this into retail? Well, think about who were you in the group? What did you do well? What did other people rely on you for? And is that something you enjoy? And if it does, which is that's a part of some of our real, mm -hmm. then you can tailor those points and who you are and look at what is this new role calling for? And you can make a 30 second video on that. I was great at leading others in boot camp because I was able to get their attention and buy in. And in being able to do that, I built their trust and they would listen to me at a moment's notice, especially when it was an emergency. Right. Okay. Well, think in retail, we have a new product that's coming out. If somebody can articulate this, who was a military general, I want them on my team because mm -hmm. I have new products that come out and I need people who can lead people. He's right. got it. Yeah. So I love that idea. Yes, you're right. Yeah. I mean, we're not looking at, you know, the, the three page resume, it should be one page, right? Um, we're not looking mm -hmm. to know every single job you had since you left school or while you were in right. school. You know, really what we're looking at is the experience that you've had in life, your abilities. And mm -hmm. we're always looking at, yes, you may be absolutely great at that, but that part of the job is only a small part. What else can you do? So, yeah. you know, you've also got to come across of how versatile you are or how willing to learn a new skill. Yes. And that, you know, that is so important because we really want to employ people today that are a little bit more general. I mean, look, if you're mm -hmm. a neurosurgeon, I want you to concentrate on the brain, please. Right. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. But you yeah. know, other than being a specialist, we really would love you to be a generalist. You know, yeah. somebody who can really dip into other areas. They may not be their absolute forte, but they can contribute. Oh, my goodness. Yes. No, I agree with you. And I think, you know, this is the day and age where we fast forwarded 10 years in technology. Mm -hmm. Right. So how, how were you generally able to, you know, survive and move your own story forward in this given environment? That is another generalist example that you can give, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to work at zoos for gorillas and zebras. And I mean, I was a professional janitor, you know, scooping the dew every day. Mm -hmm. But how did that relate is I had to have human interaction with a team that worked with animals. And if I was going to go to a different role, that would allow me not to be so specific as a leader, but I'm not afraid to be that front end worker and do the hard work that needs to be done. Right. So, well, let's, yeah. not, let's not forget the other important things there. If the animals don't like you, they don't like oh your gosh. vibe, they're going to let you know. There is no diplomacy there. <laughs> they will let you know, right? You are so <laughs> right. If you, do you know how gorillas regurge? They will eat their food and then have it come back up and then swallow it again. Ugh. And if they, if, <laughs> if they do not like you, they will take it and throw it at you. And luckily we had this one gorilla, Sylvia, who had horrible aim. 
So it was great because she would take it and just whip it at us and it would be in front of you before you were walking. But yes, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I I think, you know, I've done, I don't know how many jobs in my lifetime, you know, and, and it was always like, well, can you do this job? I said, yeah, sure. And I didn't know Mm -hmm. if I could do it or not until I tried it. And there was one or two that, uh, you know, once I got into it, I realized, no, not for me. I'm not wired for this. Um, and either move to another department or just say, okay, I'll call it quits before you quit me. You know? mm-hmm. But we we very often sell ourselves short. You know, I went to school for this, so therefore I must do that. Well, that mm-hmm. you can't do at the present moment. There aren't any openings. So what else can you do within within that bracket? You know, don't get stuck on what you went to school for. Don't get stuck on your one skill because there are many skills that make up that one skill. How can you use those skills in another arena? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, and you're so right because there's so many jobs that I've had, but a lot of the people that I've been helping when they're thinking about redirecting, they are getting stuck on, here's what I've always done and this is only what I have the experience in. And they're feeling overwhelmed. They're feeling shut down. They feel like I've done all this work and now I can't move anywhere. And I'm not sure about like your experience, but what I found is just them getting in alignment with who they are and what they stand for. Mm. And some of those impacts, like if they can go on and on about helping young children that are impoverished, or if they want to go on and on about, oh, I would like to, you know, lead this company here or there. And I would try this. They already have it within themselves. And it's like, how do you match the skills to the role? And, you know, a lot of these companies, and this is something else that I, you know, it's making me think of it. A lot of these companies closed and you have CEOs who don't have degrees. Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, some of my best friends, like they're suffering through trying to keep their company afloat. And one of them, he was like, I used to have a $35 billion company that was gas and oil. It took a hit a couple of years ago. And then come COVID, I mean, here I am. I don't have a degree, but I can tell you all the mistakes I made and make a company go, you know, and I really, I'm going to open a can of worms for a moment, but in order to be versatile and share your skills and not just rely on a um, document from a university, Mm -hmm. I think the companies need to be more open, not making them an absolute requirement. I 100% agree with you on that. Uh, We're also in a day and age where not everybody can afford to go to university. And, mm-hmm. you know, how many, I, I know personally so many people that went and got a degree and came out and did something totally opposite anyway. Yeah. Right. So what it, it shows is they have the ability to learn and study mm-hmm. and that they got good grades at something. But again, it goes back to, well, what else can you do? You know, are you a, right. you know, are you a one note uh, instrument or can you play many notes on that instrument and that's what we're looking for when we're looking for people is how you know I realize that that is your forte and right. I'm going to utilize that forte best I can but when we can't utilize that where are your other strengths that you haven't even tapped into yet and that willingness exactly. to tap into them yes and I mean when I was a leader <laughs> at Verizon Wireless when I needed a certain type of talent I wouldn't just sit and let a resume come to me. I would go pound the pavement and put myself into the community, submerse myself into an experience as a customer. And I would pick out some of my reps from who they were. And, you know, when I was creating this whole, my resume reel thing, and my daughter's like, mom, actors and actresses, you know, they show you what their talent is first. That's Mm. the same thing as hitting the ground and seeing them in the real life, you know, environment. And especially with sales or leaders, executives, you know, you can show what you've done by stats, but when it comes to showing your leadership ability or how you present or deciphering who you are, and if in your mind you think if they only met me, they would know I'm right for the job. Right. This is that this is that opportunity. Yes. Because it overcomes not having the diploma, it overcomes not having, you know, the handshake. Our new handshake is LinkedIn and social mm. media. So if you want them to see you and hear what you would say, when you'd be like, hey, how are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a normal conversation with you. You need to put it in a video. They need to meet that person first because if they like who you are and what you have to say and you can share your best practices, then it's just like, let me make sure you're right for the job. Right, exactly. You know, talking about social media, as I said before, the face you present to the potential boss, 
Mm -hmm. is the same face that you should be to everyone. Now, you'll right. be wearing different hats. I'm right. wearing a business hat. I'm wearing a colleague hat. I'm wearing the hat that I wear with the boss. That doesn't mean you're a different personality. It just means you step into a different mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are a person that's putting yourself out there looking for a job, don't think that you can look act all professional on LinkedIn and then go on Twitter or go on Instagram, yeah. you know, <laughs> showing yourself getting completely drunk, falling off a cliff or, you know, doing something crazy. You know, it's mm -hmm. that they're trying to buy the whole package of you. And that also means what you do when you're not showing your supposed business face. Um, yeah. We've got to realize that we need to represent that. That doesn't mean we can't let our hair down. But if right. it looks like you could turn up on Monday for work, still hung over from the weekend because you've partied mm -hmm. so hard, you know, that makes it dubious. Right. It does. And how many times as a leader, when you were hiring people, ah, there we go. <laughs> how, there we go. But how many times when you were a leader and you were hiring people, did you um, think, how am I acting? Am I the face of the brand right now? Mm -hmm. You need to be the face of the brand. And, yes. you know, we all have silly quirks that are within us. Yes. That makes our relationships fun. Um, but if we don't keep that in mind, how are we going to lead for a bigger company? How are we going to put ourselves forward? And sometimes that just means you got to mature. Yeah. You have yeah. to start stepping into the boots and saying, I'm going to grow up. Mm. And I know there's a few people go, no, <laughs> yeah. Know? but growing up doesn't mean that you have to be boring and growing no. up doesn't mean that you can't party and let your hair down. It's just knowing that there's always a boundary to everything, that if you overstep that boundary, you, there may be a cost you have to pay. And right. just to realize that is the common sensibility of life, you know, mm -hmm. um, stepping out in front of a car, most likely you're going to get squashed, you know, yes. It, it's it's common sense in there and that um if you are going to get drunk with a bunch of friends don't post it on social media oh right yeah, you know exactly. don't post the uh, the striptease you're doing or jumping into the pool <laughs> naked you know because you know that is your private life and there is as i think you should be the same person in private as you are in public but there are some things you should do in private that you wouldn't do in public and you right. know, keep it off the social medias so that it, you know you can let your head down and be yourself if that's your crazy self but it, that mm -hmm. the dividing line is that you don't have to share that with everyone Yes. And you can, I mean, like I'll leverage LinkedIn for business and I'll leverage Facebook for more personal like connection, but it's still the same message. It's still yes. me. It's still authentic. And I think authenticity and showing up and being truthful is more about living what you're saying than mm -hmm. just saying it. Yes. And your, your whole point supports that. So I love it. Um, the, you know, the, the other thing I think people don't realize is, um, you know, um, I have a statement here, which when I used to be a coach, the body language. So, you know, 55% mm -hmm. is how you present yourself. Now, yeah. nobody says you have to be in a suit if you're not a suit person. You're doing this on the camera, you know, you feel uncomfortable. But wear a nice shirt, clean shirt, be mm -hmm. well groomed. You know, we, we mm -hmm. want to know that you're well-groomed. You do not have to wear anything expensive. Are you comfortable in what you're wearing? Because what right. the, they don't want to be able to see the clothes first. They want to see you. And if it looks yeah. like you're well-groomed, that means you take care of yourself. That means you'll take care of whatever it is you're going to be doing in the workforce, right? So it's 38% mm -hmm. is the tone of voice. So mm -hmm. is your tone welcoming? Are you talking at the person? You've got to have me. You've got to hire me. Sorry, switched off. Not looking for that. That is the flash adding of yesterday, right? But if your tome is warm and welcoming and saying, you know, this is the experience I've had. These are my passions. This is my mission in life. And it's coming from a welcoming tone. Then people are going to more likely listen than do the content that is there, which is 7%. So it's yeah. not just plugging in and going blah, 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 blah. Right? right. It's it's having the script. It's knowing how to present yourself, the lighting, the whole works, uh, mm -hmm. and presenting yourself in a way where you look like you have put some effort into this and that you're truly yes. representing yourself in, in a positive yep light and that's what you help them do isn't it it is from start to finish and you hit the nail on the head with this one is my biggest thing is I wanted them to become visible but I didn't want them to have to think through it I wanted them to be able to say who did it for me and I did Kaylee did we did it for you 
So all you have to do, I mean, you come and it shows you, here's an example resume. Here's a template you can put everything in and this is what it should look like. And oh, by the way, now let's figure out who are you? Mm. What's your mastery in business? Let me take time to do it with you together. Mm. So you can do it from the comfort of your own home. If your baby's crying, goes to bed at 11 o'clock and you can only get on at midnight, you can. Yeah. And then you go through this process and you invest in yourself. And then once you're done with that, we teach you how to record. How do you set up your room? Like you were saying, how do you set up a light? What about your voice? And then once everything's recorded, how do you edit? What do you want to look at first to make sure you pick the right editing software? And oh, by the way, if you don't want to, sure, I'll do it for you. I don't mind, you know, yes. we're here to help you. But then how do you post it? How do you get visible? But once you know how to do this, you're not only going to know how to put it out there, but like everybody who I've helped, they're like, you empowered me right. because now I know who I am yes. and I know how to say it because I thought through it. So I know who I'm coming to the table as, and I want to know, do you have what I need and do I have what you need? And it makes interviewing just a whole different conversation. Again, as an employer, you know, I, I don't have the time to go through the resumes. And for me, that's never been the first and form, foremost. Sometimes I haven't even bothered to look at it. It's like, do I, do I see you? Do I hear you? Do I feel you? Uh, right. You know, and do you have that personality I need? Because sometimes, right. you know, you might be a job that you're just going to be in front of the computer. But how would you interact with the rest of the crew? You know, and, right. and, we're, and the way we're looking at it right now, an awful lot of people are not looking at you coming into the office, but working online within the office parameters. We're still getting mm -hmm. to know your colleagues, but you might only be doing it for Zoom for now. Right. right. So it's uh, the, not the need to actually have to physically be there, but can still be that that gregarious you even amongst yes. the zoom call so people really want to you know speak to you i like your idea um tell me more about it instead of just being a little square in the in the call yes. i'm too scared to say anything because confidence not cockiness confidence right is what we're looking for when when we're employing somebody are you confident mm -hmm. enough to try something new are you confident enough to say something whether it's wild or crazy or not are you confident mm -hmm. to put yourself on the table and say look i see it this way and and yes that's what we need because that's the creativeness we need that it creativity is. in order to pivot down this new road Oh my goodness, you're so on point. And when somebody can come to you and be authentic and say that, then it's, you know, you're hiring the right person and yeah. you are more confident to say, go run. I trust right. you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't want just the yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, three bags, full ma'am. You know, if, no. if, that's, if your ego wants that, I'm sorry, you're setting yourself up to fail. You want people mm -hmm. who can respectfully say, you know, what? I don't see it from that point of view. Can I pitch my idea? And, you know, right. they may come with an idea with 10 points and it's only two points that you really like, but you listened, you cared, and now the conversation goes even broader and everybody feels that they have an input. Exactly. Right? Because, we want. yeah. Yes. And as a hiring manager, you're trying to hire somebody to do a job, mm. you know, so you need to know that they can and mm. have their voice. Yes. yes. But you know what? Maybe, um, and I'm finding some people need help with learning how to hire. Yes. So they can get that fit too. Yes. So, and this is just a coin that allows, you know, for that to happen is when people learn to job seek in reverse and not so much the real, but like when you're talking about knowing who they are and what they're bringing to the table, that's being visible first. So, yes. so somebody meets you and have them ask for your resume. And I think we need to help people retrain their brain to think, what is this hiring manager hiring somebody for? What type of team? What do they need them to do? Do they need them to fix it or take them and keep spinning because they're doing great? But we have to know what they're looking for to be able to answer that question or ask it in an interview. And we know that by knowing what are we good at and what have we accomplished by saying it first and then backing into here's how I was successful from that. Right. And this is where it's very useful to have the company real. Uh, saying this is what the company stands for. We've been around this length of time. Uh, this is what we do. However, due to the circumstances, we're pivoting. So we're now looking for people who are able to do A, B and C and maybe work from home or work from this or that. Um, you know, the versatility 
you know, that don't become crippled because I can't go to work in an office, but I can be just as disciplined at home. You know? yeah. And so, you know, it's very important that when you're looking for a job that you're, you're looking for the job with the right company. And so that's where that company reel is really important because then it is a two way street. All right. It's right. not just all about the person being hired. Um, it, you know, I can hire you, I can fire you. You don't want that opportunity. You want that opportunity to be able to grow and feel just, mm -hmm. you know, as important as the CEO, you know, as the janitor should feel. Um, so it's important to have that company real too. So you know whether A, you know, you could fit in that company. Um, right. You've got some solutions and ideas there. Um, you know, they're the kind of people you want to work with and what they're looking for, you've got. But, you yes. know, it's, the blank resume and hoping you send it out to 100 people and hope it hits one. We, we want ourselves to be more directional, don't we? Yes. Versatile, and but directional. <laughs> versatile and directional. And we are in a virtual world. Yeah. Why are we still using a paper process? Right. Yeah. It's backward. It's behind. It's horse and buggy. Catch up. Yes. I mean we need to advance technologically. So if you're not in front of a video and if you don't have a video for your company and it's not a regular recruiting practice, mm -hmm. LinkedIn monster and the other companies have a patent where they can actually have a video, video resume platform that they can turn on. Get ready. I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and this is the way to kind of bridge that gap. You know, the other thing about people doing this, um, they can see themselves back on camera and yeah. they can hear themselves. And the thing is, when you're in front of somebody doing an interview, part of you goes blank because you don't know how you're mm -hmm. coming across, right? By doing the video thing two or three times and it's not, oh, I did it wrong, beat myself up. No, it's like, oh, well, okay, I was a bit harsh there. I could soften <laughs> up here. It's like, is that what I look like on camera? You know, when yeah. it was suggested, I went to video and not just audio. I did five years of audio and it's just now in my third year of video as well. It was like, who wants to see an old broad, you know, on, <laughs> on, you know interviewing people? They'd far rather see a blonde, sexy creature or something. And, and, and the back of my head said, but Sarah, it's not about you. It's about the content, right? Yeah. Um, and that's the thing is don't get stuck on what image. You know, you're looking at the, the, the people in the company and they're all these, you know, top 500 sexy people. And you think, well, I won't mm -hmm. fit into that. That's hopefully neither here nor there. The fact that everyone's good looking and, yes. and beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Don't let mm -hmm. image get in the way, right? Or don't try and be something that you think they want. It's always been about being authentically you. And that is the, the key common denominator to everything you do in life is being authentically you, always in self-discovery of, yes. of your abilities, of who you are, of what you want out of life. Life is a journey. It's not a conclusion. Mm -hmm. you're, you're so right. And when you get out there and you make your first video, when you've done 25 or 367, you want that first one to look embarrassing because you want to grow, Yes. but you're never going to grow if you don't take the start, first step. Yeah. A seed gets planted in dirt in the dark and it mm. germinates to come out to the sun. Yeah. You have to step into the dirt and get yourself dirty yeah. to come out and glow. So you're so right. Yeah. And everything, you know, grows at a different time. You know, weeds grow very quickly. You know, a flower yeah. might, you know, take a while to bloom and, you know, you might, get an in at a company that you want to be a part of maybe not in the position that you really would like but mm -hmm. you're in the company and now it's for you to to grow your own seed in that company and uh, and to find your voice there you know and your position there and grow within the company but sometimes you know i really would love to work for that company i like what they stand for the only job open right now is xyz well you know what if i can get it i'll take it because right I'm in now, then I can allow myself to grow within the company. So it's not like, well, I'm now it hasn't got the position I want. I'm not going to do it, but I love the company. You know, you've got to be a little versatile. Yes, you do. And you can't be above the job. You can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, every CEO that I know that has dyslexia or is the smartest cookie in the box. <laughs> yeah, you have dyslexia yes. too? Yes. I didn't know that. Some of my yeah. best friends. I mean, you overcome. That's your superpower is you can't give in. But yeah. you can't be above the job. And if you think that you're too big for the job, then you need to be in the one below that. Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, you need to 
Just yeah. so you know, really quick, my phone's at 10%. <laughs> you may so, need to plug it in. Let me know when you get there. We'll pause and you can plug it back in. <laughs> all right, pause for a second because I think... Um, so, you know, you talked about, obviously, we've talked about the importance of doing a video, importance of the, the company doing a video and, you know, where to share it. Like LinkedIn, as you said, is kind of the the employment um, social media there. Um, you know, Facebook is is a good one to even just put out to say, hey, folks, you know, um, this is my video. If you know anybody hiring, please do share it out with them. I would appreciate that. You know, the same with Twitter and Instagram, whatever you're on. But, you know, don't bombard it uh, because, you know, now it becomes offensive too much in people's face. And don't say you've got to do this, you've got to do this. It's you've still got to be personable in the way that you share it. Um, you know, yeah. on LinkedIn, you can be open and honest and say, I am looking for a job. Please do come and look at my video. Um, and to see if I'm a fit for your company. And um, with Facebook, I think it's more, please, would you share it? Same with the other social medias. But, you know, this is the thing today. I don't care who you are, um, how big you are. If you're not using social media, nobody's going to know who you are or what you do. So, but it's yes. using it right, isn't it? It is. And you're so right that you don't want to come off saying, like for me, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, I'm not saying my resume real, my resume real, my resume real. Yes. I'm not saying pro scored, pro scored, pro scored. I'm saying, who am I? I pause in the middle of my day and intentionally try to spend time with my children. Yes. So as I'm showing a picture of like the other day when I got my mental break, it was with Tatum, my 11 month old, and we were playing cars. But in that post, I shared how I plan my breaks. Mm. So it allows me to rejuvenate. It helps me feel better as a parent. And I still had content that went out there that mm. wasn't pounding my company yes. in somebody's face. Exactly. So exactly. there are, and there's so many different ways for like, if you're looking for a job, for people to see who you are, because like you said, that type of person that you show up in life is mm. the one you come forward in business. And you can show that you have a family, you know, mm. there's all those rules that, oh, it's against this and that. And you can ask if they have kids. Well, guess what? That's out the window now. Not mm. that it's not illegal. It's not, it's still illegal to be biased, but everybody knows that people had kids and had to teach them school. Mm. Everybody has to go through the homeschooling now. And it's part of our culture, but people gravitate to seeing I'm successful, but I have struggles. Mm. I'm really good at leading this type of team, but you know what? I asked for help in this area mm -hmm. because how does that feel as a hiring manager to go through somebody's posts or on Facebook and to see I was at the lake today or they talk about mowing their lawn because they appreciate pruning, right? They like something organized. You pick up those little seeds from every single post about how somebody is in business, whether it's personal or not. And you're right. When you go across these social media platforms, nobody knows who you are unless you're on them, yeah. but they have to know who you are, not just what you're promoting. And the important thing is this big word called interaction. It isn't yes. about you posting, see, but nobody's taking notice. Have you built up a following? Are you following mm -hmm. other people? Are you engaged with the people that you're following? It's not just mm -hmm. a question of liking them. It's hello. How are you? Let's connect. Or can, you know, can I help you in any way? <clears throat> or do you mind if I share my video with you? You know, it is interaction. And you can tell how a person is. If you look at their feed and see mm -hmm. what they like and what they say about other people. And if they're people that are people bashing or, you right. know, seem to be angry or this or that. And then, uh, you know, the video is I'm so sweet and kind and loving, you know, is uh, mm -hmm. maybe that isn't the fact there you know you're carrying too much anger around with you um or hate or whatever else uh, you know it's um it always gets me on these social media and that just because you see something differently you know i don't really don't care if you're black white pink yellow polka dot what right. your faith is or anything else i'm i'm holding you accountable to your character your participation your contribution in life you know that's yeah. how i see you and that's how the algorithms see you because all of the social medias are run by algorithms. So the more you feed one area, the more that area is going to grow with the people. And, mm -hmm. you know, like on LinkedIn, you have an awful lot of people there. Do you want to connect with them? Take the time 
to go through the pictures, have a look at their, their platform. Is it a platform mm -hmm. that I like? It's not about, can they give me a job? It's yeah. you're building a network. And yes. in that network, you never know if somebody knows somebody. That's the way life works, right? And mm -hmm. they really liked you. They like that check with you. They like what you post. Now, not just about your job, but by, you know, other things that you see and you like on you support. And they go, yeah, this, this, is, this is a good person. I want to introduce them to someone. So yes. you know, it's that three degrees of separation very often that you are also appealing to. So, yes. you know, just understand that your interaction is important, but how you interact is as equally as important. Oh, my goodness. I can't speak more highly of what you just said, because... LinkedIn or social media networking, that's the new handshake. Yes. And here's the thing. And here's what I'm seeing so often is um, I have people that'll spam me with sales or they'll say, will you do this for me? Let me ask you a question. Like when would you be walking down the street and see somebody that has the name of the company you want to apply to or just meet? And when would you say, hi, my name is Annie and I'm going to sell you this. And will you buy this from me? Right. No. You're not going to have that as a normal conversation. Right. It's going to be, hi, I'm Annie. What's your name? I noticed you have a yellow shirt on today and I like your necklace. <laughs> I can't match things that great. I like to wear black, but I love that you can stand out with color, <laughs> you know? And that's like the same way you need to over, you overcome this whole thing of worrying about saying the wrong right. thing and you have to be adventurous and schedule time to intentionally not only like what you're saying, comment and interact, but to see what do I see on this person's, you know, LinkedIn profile? What do I see on their Facebook that interests me? Oh my gosh, they liked Ohio State or they live on an island, right? I want to know how island life is. So, hey, Sarah, it was so great seeing you like talk about being on the island and you have to go and make a huge plan to even find something that is a necessity if you live on the mainland, right? So in order for you to do that, how does it take for you to plan that? Mm -hmm. You're now feeling like I'm saying hello as a human. Mm -hmm. And then are you more apt to say hi to me? Yeah. Have a conversation? Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, we, there's too much chatter in the world as it is. And there's too many people over speaking each other. And yeah. in order to get our voice heard in there, we've got to understand what's our instrument. And we're all gifted with a particular instrument. And it's up to us to learn how to play that instrument and then find the right orchestra to join. Because that's yes. what, when you go to work with someone, you want to work with them, not for them. That's right. you know, a big change there. If you're working for them, you're the employee and you really don't feel that engaged in the company. If you want to work for them, that means you're engaged in the company, uh, which, whichever way it goes, you are a part of the equation. And it's important that to understand that what am I contributing? You know, if I'm joining this orchestra, is my instrument right for this orchestra? Can I yes. follow the conductor? You know, can right. the conductor recognize that that could be a solo for me? right mm -hmm. because they see it in me right and this is the thing in life be willing to keep self-discovering be willing to keep growing but understand what is your gift what is your instrument because that's what right. you're bringing to the table and i think a huge thing in any business in any part of life right now is kindness and consideration mm -hmm. be considerate towards people be kind towards people there is enough hate in the world yeah. and nobody wants to hire it right yeah. There was a gentleman from Microsoft that recently posted that um, if you're the A word hole, <laughs> then you will not make it in my company. You will be fired. And I think that has a lot to say, especially given the times, is yes. that how, how you treat people yes. and how willing you are to be somebody in camaraderie and how willing you are to allow somebody else to have a gift that maybe you don't. Mm -hmm is what's really a true measurement of how successful you're going to be in many circumstances. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know. I just think like what you're talking about with how people are coming at each other mm. and how they're trying to, everybody's kind of in a state of panic, not everybody, but many people are in a state of panic. It's like that knee jerk reaction where I just want to get something. I'm going to bite. And if you don't give it to me, I'm going to run away. Mm. I think slowing down yes. and saying, what can I give to you? How can I help you? 
how can we come together is really the approach that people need to start taking. Yeah. You know, we, we started off with, you know, the pause, you had a pause, you know, your, your, your mm -hmm. spouse left you, you have a, you had a seven month old baby, you had six other children and all of a sudden yes. he's taken the company as well. And it's yeah. like, what do you do now? And a lot of people be thrown into a tailspin, into a depression, into a flux. And I'm a, I can imagine that you probably had most certainly some emotions, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like, well, I'm a mother of seven, so I have to step up. But listening to your daughter, being creative together, doing this together, because obviously the love and respect for each other, but it wasn't the, I'm the mother, you're the daughter, what I say is go. You mm -hmm. gave her the respect to listen to her and go, mm -hmm. that's a brilliant idea. How do we make it happen? We don't wait for someone else to do it. How do we do it? And we need yeah. more people like that. And we also need to think more like that. You know, mm -hmm. a door is closed. Maybe it's been slammed in your face and yes, it hurts. But, you know, you, you don't want to be stuck in a dark room. You, know, you want to let the light in. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to be proactive in letting right. that light in, in finding something else. And yes, if it's a loss of something, yeah, give yourself some nurturing love. <clears throat> it's hard to be facing that loss. But you've also got to look at, OK, this is not getting me anywhere. What do I do now? And be exactly. willing to try every window and door until you find the right one. And, you know, uh, so many people I've spoken to during this COVID have either retired or folded their companies and gone on to doing consulting or changed directions altogether. And they mm -hmm. said, it's, it's a gift. I was doing this. I was very good at it. I was making money at it. But now that I'm actually home and not doing that job anymore. I'm actually even busier being a consultant and I don't have to get on a plane and I don't have to leave my family. You know, sometimes we mm -hmm. have to look at things as not the end of times, but of that redirect that is yes. of benefit to us. And again, having interviewed so many business people who own their own companies that are working with big organizations or governments, um, they are not, your big degree type people they may have something but you know that's you wouldn't even know if they had a degree you wouldn't even right. know if they were masters or phds you wouldn't know because they're coming across as authentic human beings who just mm -hmm. want to see whatever they're doing grow and benefit humanity and that's really the approach that we need to take on both sides isn't it we really do i mean it's we're all part of a greater piece to the puzzle. We're just one little piece and it doesn't matter if you have a title or not. And when you go through a disruptive period where, you know, my circumstance, it was really tough to go through, but I didn't tell anybody about it. Mm. I told my mom, my dad, and one of my friends, and that was it. And I took my girls, we came together and I have two young sons too, but we buckled down and we did what we had to do. But the truth is, is I left a very difficult relationship and I chose to end something that was abusive. Mm -hmm. And that is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I've had seven children, but to leave abuse was extremely difficult. But what you find is when you have the strength to accept my life is no longer what I know I have known it as, and my life is what I have here today. What can I do to pick up different pieces to make of it and to put it together and help other people? When you can help other people, when you can solve a problem, you're working on a purpose. You're not working for a dollar. Yeah. And that's what ends up impacting. And for me as a mother, I teach my children to have a voice. I mean, sometimes it bites me in the rear. Oh, yes. Because no, no. they're too. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I know that one, darling. <laughs> they're too smart for their own good and they yeah. will negotiate. And I have to be like, no, this one is not open for negotiation. <laughs> but as they've grown, I've always want them to know that they can make a choice and feel strong with that. Um, as long as they're not disrespectful, mm -hmm. they are allowed to share their opinion. Right. And, um, you know, that's something that I practice and lead in myself and mm -hmm. leaving a domestic violence situation saying, we're going to figure this out, creating a company and pivoting another company. It was just that I had to do it. And I think being an athlete and an Olympic performer in 96 and really having that grit and grind to perfect the skills that I had mm -hmm. built that tenacity and that ability to look at my situations today as an adult and leading a team of seven to be successful and know that we're going to be okay. We trust God. We're going to surrender. We're going to show up every day and do our best mm -hmm. and he'll provide. 
and, and you know your past skills you know uh, what what um, olympian were you well i was an olympic performer so in 96 coca-cola city had a stage to show the entire world what cheer and dance were and they invited our team to go and perform there so we were one of the top ones that had won a title and they were like hey come on in so they showed the world what cheer was great and the thing is the discipline that you had to, in order to do that the mm -hmm. the working through the fatigue the working through the days you don't feel good the working through everything doesn't matter if you've had a fight with your boyfriend or anything else you know yeah. it's it's uh, you are now part of the team part of the group and everybody's there for everyone but you're there for the job right the, Correct. and that's the thing is that i think um most certainly if you're having a going through a hard time tell your boss yes. and and say look you know this may affect my work i'm hoping it won't but please understand if it does don't reprimand me just understand i may need a pause or may and need I, a hug <laughs> yes and you're so right and i think as leaders of industries they we need to step back and say wow they're having a human moment and yes. i being human too yeah. because you need to look at yourself as a leader and say I need to lead my people and I need to let them have life. And I think, you know, COVID really made us look at that, didn't it? Yeah. We yeah. had to let kids interrupt. We had to understand yes. there were home schedules. So it was a blessing. Yes. Mm. But I really think, I mean, it goes both ways. We keep telling these job seekers, you need to do this and you need to do that. Well, I think the companies need to jump on board too. Uh -huh. Yes. To make it better for employees. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the beauty of staying at home, you know, they may not be working nine to five. As you mm -hmm. said, they're going to take this amount of time off to be with their family. And they may work, finish their day after the kids have gone to bed or in the afternoon nap or whatever the case is. As long as the job is getting done, it doesn't really matter if it's within that time period. Unless it's right. one of those kind of jobs that you are on duty on the phone for that mm -hmm. time, then that's a different situation. But I think what we're looking at with many companies now, look, you know, you can't come in. Um, we don't want to put you at risk. Uh, this is what I need you to get done. And you do it the best you can, hopefully within this time frame, And you work out your own management. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. We have to become our own managers right to, yes. to work in, in a, a time frame and in a schedule and in a discipline that is different to what it would be in an office so again versatility you know we're very mm -hmm. very adaptable creatures if we get out of our heads we are and if you can communicate when that's happening like you said tell your boss mm -hmm. so and if you allow yourself that transition then it works out so communicating, saying, hey, I'm having a tough day. I'm trying to transition and understand how to work this job and my child's bothering me. What are some best practices you have? Exactly. That can take that tough conversation and allow your boss to be there for you. And your boss could say, you know, I don't know. My wife handles that. But let's yeah. have a look. What kind of problems are you having? Okay, you know what? Go and tend to your kids first. Come back to this mm -hmm. later because now they don't just see you as an employee. They see you as a human being who's got all these other challenges as well. And I think this is where we need to be in, in every aspect of our life. I see you, Annie, as a colleague, right? So right. therefore, it is if we respect each other's position but understand we are all human beings navigating new paths. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. In fact, no. What's going to happen tomorrow is up to each and every one of us so how we interact and participate in life right now. Correct. And the other thing I think that we're missing too is what about the children? Yes. When there are children in a house, they need their parents yeah. and they need to make sure that their parent is present. So as a leader of a company, when you're building it, if you allow your employees to actually pause and take care of a situation and be okay with two minutes yes. while they're handling that, that child's going to be satisfied. The parent's not going to feel guilt and their throughput's going to be there. Yeah. So I think all around, we really learned that as COVID, but I think the ones maybe who haven't, you've got to get on the ball. Yes. You've got to move that forward. Yes, yes. Get with, get with the new program, definitely. So, I mean, you know, good leaders are there to create leaders. It's not mm -hmm. about lording over someone. It's about no. finding the leaders within the people you're leading and some people are just excellent followers they don't want to lead 
but they're yeah. excellent followers. They're excellent people who've been able to see your idea and know how to implement it, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody has a role. Not everybody wants to be a leader, but even if they're in that role, you know, you've given them something to do, they're now a leader of that. So in other words, we're all leaders of everything we do, of our choices, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I think the um, the real kicker there is that everybody wants autonomy mm. and they want to be trusted and they want to be creative. Who wants to be put in a box? No right. one. What box? And anybody <laughs> Exactly. Push off the sides, punch out the corners, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I tell my kids. I'm like, don't let anybody put you in a box. Yeah. You show up for school. Your job is to get good grades. And if you're not having you know, a good time, we talk through it. Mm. But that's your job. Get it done. But you step into your purpose when you move forward. Yeah. That's what your heart's about. That's what your purpose in this life and your career is about. Yeah. So, yes. And don't beat yourself up if you're not good at math. Maybe you're good no. at something else. You know, that's the whole thing is, you know, get the help where you need it, where you know you're the weakest. But you, you know that's not going to be a road you're going to go down. You just need it enough to understand Correct. it but you know you don't have to have a's in everything and that is including mm -hmm. in our workforce and in our life force is that if, if you're beating yourself up to, to be i must be an a i must be at the top i must be this the pressure you're putting upon yourself at some point you're going to snap so just pause take a breath and just be good at what you're really good at and you know in other areas try and grow as much as you can you know i really am happy that you brought that up because as a mom I think my biggest thing that I had to learn, because I had like two sets of litters, if you will. Yeah. I had four daughters and then I split for my husband and then he had a daughter and then we had three together with um, my second one. And the biggest thing for me is as my older daughters grew into teenagehood was that I learned it's not about me being the perfect mom. Mm -hmm. It's about me learning to be a mom that each one of them needs. Yeah. So... Yeah. And I mean, I think some of the sibling rivalry, you know, comes into play with that, but you have to be able to pause and understand, okay, what's going wrong here? Just like, you know, the pivots and stuff in business. Yeah. But you need to look at your children and understand who are they, what do they need? What are their interests and what type of mom do they need for me to be? And not only is it different personalities, but it's different stages of life. Like girls pre license, I mean, they're ready to go and young emotional pups where can you hear me uh, yes but your volume's changed so technology folks see things happen we just adjust to it <laughs> on okay there's so much to learn and, and we learn in, in times of redirection and most certainly as a human race right now we are redirecting um, in the States, you've not only got the COVID going on, some people believing it's a hoax, or it's nothing, you know, uh, look me, I got it, thousands of millions of dollars were spent to me and I'm perfectly all right now and you can be too, even though I'm taking away your medical, right? So uh, you've got COVID, you've got the political arena, you've got a, a complete um, canvas there of not even knowing how to paint on it because you're not quite sure where everybody else is going. So the only thing you have control over is where you're going and what yes. you can do for you. And just that, know that there are people out there that are looking for people, especially mm -hmm. versatile people, general people, um, you know, that there are jobs out there. There just may not be the job that you had before. And yeah. it, don't get despondent about what's going on politically, um, economically, or even physically, because you can always do something within those restraints and still be creative and manifest. So it's don't get caught up in the storm, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> Avoid it and do what you can for you. It's not about pointing fingers saying what well, government's got to provide. It's three fingers are pointing back at you saying, well, what are you doing for you? Exactly. In order to find a new position and redirection in life because ultimately you are responsible for you. Yes, that is correct. And the outside world thinks that, you know, it's chaos and fires on every street. I can tell you when I walk out of my door, it is peace and, you know, kids are riding their bikes. It's not, you know, all up in battle. And we don't watch the news at my house. I tune in when I need to, but that's it. Yeah. But you are absolutely correct. No matter what happens, no matter which way that this world goes, finding peace is within your own soul. 
in finding creativity and success is within how you show up every day. Yeah. And faith um, isn't about my faith of your faith. It's about loving kindness and caring towards each other, no matter what your faith is. Right. It's, you know, humanity, you know, being there for each other. It is. It's really about that. And I think that that's more of a spiritual aha moment when you realize I don't have to take your opinion and you don't have to take mine, but we can live in harmony. Right. Yes. We don't have to hate you because of it. You know, this is, oh, you know, please folks, you know, I I was given a saying uh, two and a half, three years ago that the universe is here to shake us up, to wake us up for us to step up and change it up. And I've added mm-hmm. another one since then and grow up. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I like that one. Yes. We all need to grow up, but I think you need to be able to stop your mind and your mouth long enough yeah. to be able to hear <laughs> and to sense really what's going on around you so you can absorb it and act and create appropriately. Right. You know, if you're goes... not right... mm-hmm. Go ahead. Now, what were you saying? I was saying, because if you're not right feeling inside of yourself, if you feel uneasy or with indecision, you're not going to know which way to go. But if you pause and just think about it and look and feel, it just happens. Yes. And, you know, uh, you know, it's if you want to rant and rave about something, OK, do it on, on, on a video that you don't send out. Write it out. Get it out of you. Get it out of you. But you don't press send. Or you yes. post, right? There are some things <laughs> just... See yourself back on the video after the rant and rave. You go, oh, thank God I didn't post that, but I'm glad I said it. Yes. Right? Sometimes it's just for you to say it and get it yes. out. And then when you look at either what you've written or what you were going to post or the video you've just done, uh, pause before you send. Does the rest of the world need this from you? Yes. And I don't know about you, but I've accidentally hit send before. And mm-hmm. had to try to undo and delete. <laughs> yes. So there's always a yeah. backup, but yes. Yes. I agree with you. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we can have an opinion. We can be upset with what's going on. You know, we, we're human. We know that there's a lot of things that are just, just so wrong at the present moment. Um, but we can't keep looking to others to putting it right. We've got to understand the human race needs to be interactive and participatory in everything that we all collectively do. And so mm-hmm. this isn't about abstaining from choices. So well, there's no point because yes, there's every point. If you want to see change, you have to be the change. And if you don't like where your life is right now, you don't like your job or you haven't got a job, the only person that's going to give you a job is you. By you Mm -hmm. stepping up and doing something that's going to attract the attention of who you are, of what you've got to give and what you stand for, what's your mission in life. And that will then appeal to somebody else out there and going, you're the right fit for me. But if you're not willing to do it, then how are people going to know who you are or whether you are the right fit for them or not? So they've got to just step up and make this real. So how do they do it? What's the process, love? Right. Well, first of all, the process starts with nobody owes you anything. Mm -hmm. Like what you said, you want to find a job, you need to do you. And if you want to do you and what you are doing is not working, you need to change it. And the biggest thing that I challenge everybody today, including the companies and the recruiters, is to start or start the job seek and reverse. Mm -hmm. How can I be visible? How can I let you see who I am in business and the type of person that I show up as in video so you can see me, you can relate to me, you can meet me? Because right now you can see who I am, you can see what my face looks like, you can see when I speak, what that feeling and that energy is. And I want to feel who somebody is in an interview. So put it out there. Number one is get a good concrete resume that does show your back experience. That's not going to go away. Recruiters and headhunters don't change. They're still going to look for it. But just like you find your keywords, take a minute to make those titles. In every one of those titles, you're going to make a video. So if you have 17 keywords for one resume you just wrote out, make 17 titles and then start with one. Okay, I'm a sales professional. I need to talk about pipeline. So your pipeline is going to give a best practice or it's going to give you know, a time when you had a great experience and you achieved landing a customer because you had them in your pipeline for seven months and you finally turned that into a sale on a month that everybody else didn't hit quota. 
Right. That is a phenomenal video that you can put out there that a recruiter will find. So you put your content in videos and you're putting that out on social media, but it's not always about the job. What if the next one's closing a sale? Well, guess what? We all just had kids at home and we had to be versatile and we had to switch in COVID to be stay at home parents that are teaching, right? So when did you close a sale for your child to finish writing a piece of paper out with a brownie? Oh my goodness. You're not talking about business, but you are talking about an experience with your child. A negotiation. Yep. Yes. Yes. If you can negotiate with a child to finish homework when they don't want you to be the teacher, you're a winner. Yes. You're hired. Yes. But then once you get that out there, really get in that networking space where you're connecting with people, where you're using a real handshake before you send a message Say, what would I say to them in person? How does that sound? And then how do I get to know them if I've never met them before? You look at their profile. And then the last thing is, as you're going out there, stop making business profiles look boring. Right. Start giving them pizzazz. Put in pink. Put in a llama. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but if I ever saw somebody's webpage, right, or LinkedIn page, and it had a llama at the top, I'd be like, what the heck is a llama about? Yeah. What if they raise them? What if they worked at a zoo? What if they don't like llamas? Mm. It's a perfect point, you know, to start a conversation, but we need to be different. We need to stop being boring. And just like we mentioned before, the CEO who looks like they can talk like you and I are, and they're not in that, you know, tight business suit anymore is who seems to be that everybody's gravitating to because they're approachable. Who are you? Are you approachable? Are you in that starch jacket? Yeah. Not to say that you don't want to come looking nice. Yes. You need to look, you know, well-groomed and come to the table. But you don't have to put on an image that you're not. You can be yourself. Right. Exactly. And being yourself. I mean, like, if you're a skydiver, you know, that's on your that's on your, your bio. That's on your um, visual there. And people, you skydive. How many hours have you done? And they now mm-hmm. know that you're a risk taker. But clearly, you're still alive. So obviously, you know how to be sensible about it. That says a lot right. about a person, right? You're adventurous, you're a risk taker, but you're still alive. So obviously, you, you are cautionary on how you do it as well. And that's a huge thing. We want risk takers in business, but we don't want mm-hmm. them to be callous about it. So, you know, you may play an instrument. And, uh, you know, you know uh, what distresses me? I pick up my flute or my guitar. And, you know, here's a tune on my website, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's... The quirkiness of you is also what we're looking for. You know, not just the one dimensional. We want to see the whole range of you. Yes. And you're so right. And I think that takes us to the root. Mm. That in order to put good content out there to job seek forward or backward, you really need to start with you. Yeah. So how do you know yourself? How do you have that conversation to really know who am I in a group? What person do I show up as? And how do I do it well? And that's a really tough conversation to have by yourself. So, yes. you know, and that's what you're there for. And, and if you've got, yeah. you know, some multiple videos, you could make a contact with someone on, on LinkedIn and uh, they respond back when you say, I'd love to connect with you. And they respond back and, uh, and just say, look, um, if you have time, would you take, it this, uh, take a look at this one video? I think it might be of interest to you. Don't start selling yourself. If your video doesn't sell you, right, and you always got to make sure that there's there's contact there, but if the video doesn't sell you, then it's not right, you know, for them. Don't go back and say, well, why didn't you respond to my video? Forget it. You put it out there. If they see it, they like it. If they like it, they respond to it. They may not get to it straight away, but it's, it's the invitation. Don't get out there selling yourself. What you're doing is inspiring people. Uh, and inviting them at the same time to want to know you. So inspire them, right? right? Yes. And I think you hit the nail on the head there. Don't overdo it. When you feel that pressure and that anxiety, like building like, oh my gosh, they didn't call me. They didn't do this. You know, it's okay to wait a few days and just say, you know what? It was great speaking with you. If you would like to learn about more or more about me, let me know. And if I can ever be of help to you, never hesitate to reach out. Right. Because when you come forward and you're approachable and you're somebody who's soft and you don't take conflict by pounding somebody's door down, even maybe when you want to, that shows them right there that you're easy to work with. And that makes a statement. And, you know, the shows that, that if you follow somebody and they post something personal, you know, achievement mm-hmm. or, you know, some comment on something, respond to it. 
you know, because, yeah. you know, they want to know it's not that you care. You know, they're human yeah. beings too. They're going for something too. It's not all about pitching the business, you know, and it's like, you know, maybe you've had a strength of that. You know, I'm sorry to hear this happen to you. You know, this such and such happened to me and this is what I did. And I don't know if this will help, but you know, it helped me. Right. Yes. And that's the thing is we are all wanting to be treated like human beings and that it's okay to be flawsome. Right? Yes, and that, I love that word. Blossom. Yeah, it is a great <laughs> word, isn't it? Yeah. And um, and imperfection is what mm -hmm. we all are. You know, that's what makes us perfect. It, unique is in our imperfections. And we're not asking you to be like this person or that person. You know, people mm -hmm. say, oh, you know, are you trying to be an Oprah? And I say, no, I'm a Sarah. This yeah. Sarah will interview and Sarah will do what Sarah does. And you can take it or leave it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's out of my hands. I'm going to yeah. present me. You either feel it or you don't feel it. I'm not going to be offended if you don't. And that's another important thing. You are going to get rejections. Do yes. not take them personally. Right. That just means it wasn't the right fit. Pivot your, um, your target base and maybe look for different people. And you're so on point. I'm happy that you brought that up because especially as an entrepreneur and I think in life, when you're going after something that you're so passionate about and you want it, we all feel hurt with rejection. Yes. We all get that pinch in our stomach, but it's about what do you do then? Yes. And it's work. It's discipline to show up and say, okay, this is what, you know, hit me. I'm feeling crummy right now, but all right, I'm going to let myself feel it for a moment. And then where am I moving on? Mm -hmm. You know? And Yes. I love that because it is, I spent two weeks being a job seeker because to me, I want to know and understand what my clients and customers are yeah. feeling. I want to be able to relate to them more than just saying, Oh, I'm so sorry. And be, you know, somebody who can talk. And I, I can't tell you that I learned. <laughs> Back again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> The challenges um, of the video. <laughs> but, but what I learned, I think, in being in my customer's shoes was you need to click to see if the job's there first before you put in all the work. Yes. I can't tell you how many jobs are ghosting. But, you know, I also thought about the recruiters. Can you imagine going through this many people where everybody's paying to have their resume done and not knowing really right? Right. I mean, for me, I'd want to see somebody speak. Yes. So it really made me feel like, and in my heart, I want to help people. Mm -hmm. And it felt that the product that I created is in the right space to help. Yes. And the response when I actually did have recruiters call me back was, it was your reel that actually made me put you in the pile because I was on the fence, but I, you know, I concluded. Right. Exactly. And that is powerful. Right. And, and I know that you're starting up another business as well. So, you know, you're, but this real one, you know, is what we're talking about today. And I think is so very necessary because we are in a digital world. Uh, we yeah. are in a world that people want to know who we are before what we can do. And uh, we are in a world where we want to feel we belong and that it's not just a nine to five boring job that we hate, but we need mm -hmm. the money. And so, we also want to know that we're seen and heard in the job. Um, mm. And that's important. And that means that you've got to do some due diligence and some preparation in finding the right company in which to bring your expertise to. And that means the two way street, put your reel out there, attract the people that see you, that want yes. to know more about you. Right. And yes. the companies to do it in a way and say, this is, this is who we are as a company. This is why we are why, why we do what we do, you know, whom we are serving with our product or our service. And this is the pe people we're looking for to join our team because yes. you want to be a part of the team. Yes. And your real is your self-advertisement. Yes. It's yes. working for you when you're sleeping. Yeah. So can you imagine that somebody can meet you, see you, hear you and relate to you when you're not doing a thing? Yeah. A resume is a piece of paper, but a real view. Yes. Yes. That, that is just kind of the, the background thing. Well, you know, okay, I really like this person. Let me check the resume. Yeah. Okay. They've got the credentials. What's the next stage? Now it's an interview. 
a problem yeah. to you, right? And here's the thing, like if you don't like to show your face, yeah. Okay, and you're in the tech space. So like sitting there and thinking, oh my goodness, talking in front of a camera is gonna kill me. I just can't do it. Make a really cool video. Yes. And yes. have somebody else do the voiceover, but let it be your creativity. Yeah. It doesn't have to be what the cookie cutter approach is that you see other people are doing. Right. You need to be creative and show yourself in this because everybody has been saying, I want them to meet me. I want them to see me. And they wait for that interview. You don't have to wait anymore. Right. And recruiters, if this tool's out there, then a recruiter better start looking at it and saying, I like your reel and start mm. encouraging it. But I think that's hard for them to do that because of all the legalities. But um, the more that people start hearing that the video and your content is what is getting them somewhere, the more that they're going to start using it. And to your point, you said something earlier that when you're networking with people and you're like, hey, can I send you my reel or my video? Why not when you're networking with them, record yourself and send them a video? Yes. Like, hey, you know what, Sarah, it was so good that we were introduced to each other. I would love to have a virtual coffee with you. What do you have in the next week or two? Yeah. What if you're connecting with a recruiter of your favorite company and you're not trying to sell them yet, right? Because you don't want to come across like that salesperson. Relationship. Everything in life yes. is relationship, right? You're building yes. a relationship. Yes, but what if you use that video to build the relationship? Yes. What if it's not just words? Right. And you don't even have to send them your reel. What if it's just relate to me, hear me, let's get a coffee? Yes. And and then it you know be it can be if if you wish to have a taste of me beforehand, here's a little reel. Yes. A short and, and sweet they, reel, right? And, yes, and if they respond to it or you know, if you do get a sale, somebody spams you a sale from a company that you like. Here's another way to get visible is ask them, like, I don't like when people spam me with sales. Yes. So I'll respond back and I'll say, what's your favorite football team? Or mm -hmm. what was your favorite movie? And I will engage them in a conversation in a different way. Yes. So if you're job seeking, maybe switch some of those sales things around. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think uh, one of the things that's um, also important is we know that it's not the big CEOs that are looking, but they might have the profile out there. You know, they, they hire people to kind of look for, for them. But everybody wants to be treated as a human being. The, your yes. title may be CEO. You may be the founder of the company. I've been founders of my own company. That doesn't mm -hmm. make me any more special than you. Yeah. Uh, it just means that this I followed my passion, I followed my conviction, da 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 da, and they want you to see them, right? And, and what they've achieved, and how they've done it, their why, wh who is it for? As much as you want them to see you, so it's always about building a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, and people like to talk about themselves. Yes. And even that CEO sits there and wonders if I hit send, is this going to be a good post? Are people going to like it? Yeah. And yeah. when they see you say, wow, this, in, you know, this inspired my day. That's why they do it. So that could be you. And who says you can't be an inspiration, right? You know, yeah. it's, um, I take pictures I really love and I put words on top of them and I send it out with something just even, you know, to, to, boost people's day up or a food for thought or you know just a comment that might just hit somebody the right way that day it's again about participation in your own life stop waiting for things to come to you you've got yes. to go and create the things and go to other people and that means share yourself i don't want to work on social media and then you know go see if mcdonald's is hiring you know yeah. it's, you know the thing is we well, whether we like it or not sometimes we have to step outside of our comfort zone and just mm -hmm. go and push ourselves. And afterwards, we're going like, you know, I never would have thought I could do that. But yes. I'm so glad I did. Yeah. Yes. And you, you know what just cracks me up that you made me think about? There are so many people who are coming out of retirement because they have to right now to go back yes. to work. How many like people that are age 60 and over do you see really capturing that video space right now? When I see somebody who's 60 and over capturing it, it is so interesting to me. It's a scroll stop. It stops you to pay attention. And yeah. like the wisdom and the attention yes. and everything comes out. So if you're considering and feeling like maybe ageism is a, you know, 
a bad thing or maybe you're overqualified for your role, do not dummy down your resume. No. You need to boost your content. Yes. You need to show that soft side of you. How can I help? Here's the best practice that I had here. I would love to take another company to the next level. You need to show that you're not above the job, but you're part of the job. Yes. And I really think because the biggest attention that's come into my product are the 18 to 26 year olds and then 45 and over. They get it because they want to stand out. I think they need to take it on. Yes. And, and you know, I mean, I'm 66 and I interview an awful lot of people that are plus 40, 50 yeah. and they've had to pivot new companies. Many of them, you know, I was in corporate for so many years, felt soulless and I finally left and did something I really love. And they took mm -hmm. all the experience that they had learned through their lives and applied it to their own business, to their own entrepreneurialism. And I, you know, I've got coming up this week for next week, um, an 83 and an 88 year old. And they're yeah. both incredibly creative. They're both still working. They're both still out there participating in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's do not put age against us, but understand we've earned the right to share our wisdom because right. we lived the life and the experience and it is our experiences mm -hmm. that we're sharing with you. And those are the golden nuggets from people that have gone before you, no matter what age they are. So no, don't let ageism, sexism, no. faithism, politicalism, or anything else get away. See the person for yes. who and they are I and not everything else around them. Yes. And I think something that could really help is if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to start a company, like for me right now, for um, one of the other companies, I'm looking for an entrepreneur in residency. Mm -hmm. And the thing that benefits me in that is I can sit here and have a conversation with them like I can with you. Okay. Here's my strategy. Here's what I'm looking for. You've already proven yourself. I want you on my team to help me prove this. Let's solve this problem. So I think that, you know, it's our own fear. It's that self-talk that really gets us into that position saying we're not worth it. We don't have something to offer because I think that there is a position for everybody that they do have something to offer. And I know as new startup companies, we're looking for people who've already proven themselves that know they have that wisdom and we would love them on our team because they might not need to buy that first house and everything else. Right. Yes. So, yes. you know, for that older age, there are perks. I love hiring single parents, mothers mm. and fathers, because I know that if they call off for a day, they've thought through it Yeah. because they need that job. And I love people who are just coming out into the job force because they have something to prove. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, again, it goes to the both sides and what are you trying to create with the company? and the type of person, you need to understand that culture and that role. But I think as a job seeker, you need to see what you do bring to the table and highlight it because there is a company who's going to need you. Yes. Oh, there's always something somewhere for you. You know, oh, there aren't any jobs out there. Yes, there are. There are so yeah. many companies that now have had to pivot into a different direction and now they need differently skilled people. So mm -hmm. there is always something out there, but you've got to be willing to put yourself out there. And, yes. you know, as far as the video is concerned and you, you know, you don't feel confident, do it a few times. Do a reel over and over again and keep looking at yourself and go, you know what? Just breathe this, Sarah. You look too uptight. You know, uh, you know mm -hmm. just let that go and just do it. And, you know, if you make a mistake, so be it. You can redo it. Right? Yes. Or you can edit it. You know, it's okay. Don't be so uptight. If you're doing a video on a spot and something comes in, use it. Right. Yes. You know, oh, yes. sorry, my naked kid has come in. This is not the kind of video I'm doing, you know, exactly. and don't cut it out. Make fun out of it because then people know that you can deal with a situation right yes. in the now. Right. Yes. Yes. And I think like if you have children, bring them in the video, be like, hey, this is something I don't have the confidence. So we're going to have, you know, a baby. There was a gentleman who did that recently. It was great. What about bringing your dog or yes. let the cat be back there? Yes, I mean, exactly. we live in a world where we're all virtual. So right. that's so relatable. Yes, I love it. Yes, yes. And, you know, it's 
make fun out of things you know yes seriousness that show that you can be but also we're all looking for a little laughter and a little lightness so you know make sure that one of those reels is that is a, the funny side of you and yes. uh, also you know just remember to breathe remember to pause you remember mm -hmm. there's there's an answer for everything but you don't get it if you're gripped up with gritted teeth and in panic mm -hmm. you know open up the hands take the deep breath pause relax why are you doing this and you look at your seven children and you go i know why all right exactly. now it is what where and how yeah. right yep yeah. and whom and uh, and they're just willing be willing to take the journey so how do people get hold of you to and um, what kind of packages do you have so if people want to get a hold of me please feel free to reach out to email me annie a n n e at my resume real dot us if this is not just for people in the us it's just my website is a us address mm -hmm. but anybody can come and help me um help them so that you can do that. You can also go to my website, um, www.myresumereel.us, or you can go directly to the course, which is myresumereel.learnworlds.com. You can access that from the website. And then the packages that I have, I have the course, and I discounted that greatly due to COVID. Right now, it's $49.99. Um, Sarah does have a code that mm -hmm. you can get $10 off. She's the only one that has that right now. Wonderful. And um, if you or anybody you know is having trouble, just email me. We'll talk through it. We can work something out. I want you to be able to stand out. Yes. And then if you want one on one, if you don't want to do it all by yourself, let's do it together. I offer, you know, just a one on one service where we do a resume, a reel. I teach you how to um, capture your video. I edit it for you. And then I have some interview coaching mm -hmm. so you can, you know, go into the job force. And then I break it down to different segments of all of that. So however I can help anybody, I mean, that's what I'm here for. Just reach out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've taken all your past expertise and everything else that you've done and you've just pivoted it into a new direction of need. Mm -hmm. And when we're ever in a time of crisis, this is where most innovations and creativity comes to comes to the mm -hmm. fold because it's what do we need? How do we create what we need? And right yes. now, with so many people unemployed, and as you said, it's not just in the States, it's anywhere, this technique can be used anywhere in yes. any country. And it's just a question of learning how to put it together because it's different today. And mm -hmm. how do you stand up above the crowd? And how do you let people know who the real you is? Before exactly. they know everything you can do, they want to know they're buying, you know, they're buying you. In business, in everything that you do, people are buying you first. Correct. Right. Always. So yeah. are you are you approachable where they look at you and go, I want that person. Yep. That's yep. what we want. We want people to say, I want you. Yes. <laughs> we want them to say, oh, my goodness, where's the resume? Sign me up. That's exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And as I said, you know, if it's getting into a company, you're not in the job that you want but you've got the shoe in, you're in there. Now you can prove it to them that, you know, this is an area that you really will be good at. But and it's, you know, just as important as the, the businesses to have that video as well of who they are as a company, what they're looking for, because you're looking at a, at a good match, a good synergy. And you don't want to be going after a job and realize, oh, I don't even like what that company stands for. So right. it's a two-way street. Both sides need yes. it. And if the if anybody who's consulting or a company wants that and they need help to do that, I'm capable of helping with that as well. Right. Exactly. That's another thing that is on the website is I created it to be duplicated or for us to help you incorporate this into what you're doing. Right. So basically, it's my resume real and making it real for potential employees. And that's the important thing that we're looking at. So all you have to do is come to selfdiscoverymedia.com. Her show is under building your business, but you just put in Annie um, Gottwald, which is G-O-T-T-W-A-L-D. And you will see the show up there with the percentage on. So I invite you to come back to the site, folks, and then you can see 
all about her and the uh, the gift that she's given of the the ten dollars off and uh, you know everything helps right everything helps but the most important thing right now is to get yourself out there you could be in a job right now and it you know it was perfect before covid but it's not now and you need to be somewhere else because of your circumstances so you maybe just don't want to be out in a big crowd of people and prefer to work from home for safety or health issues or anything is valid it's just a question how do you get people to notice you if you can't be out there in the physical world so this is the way to do it right That's resume right. real resume real perfect <laughs> excellent i wish they were around in my time because my <laughs> written resume you know it's you've done a lot is it yeah because <laughs> i was always jumping around it was one of those people a bit of a disruptor i didn't know this i'd go into the company and i'd disrupt it by uh, showing them where things were going wrong yes. <laughs> and yeah. then, then you had to put it right and then i'll move on and it just i didn't realize i was doing that but looking back in hindsight so you know maybe that is what you are you're there to help yeah. see something from a different point of view but the whole point is get real I do your resume right. real, right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing here, Annie. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And also for, you know, not just crouching down and going, why me? But going, okay, all right, I have to step up. What are we going to do? Listening to your daughter, seeing the innovation, mm -hmm. and just the fact of how much it's actually needed and how much common sense around it. It just makes sense in this world today. It really Thank does. You. I really appreciate that. And you know what? I think when we're dropped to our knees and we start hearing why me, we yeah. need to change that into why not me. Right. Yeah. You know, it's me for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what is in front of me? And you can't see that if you're in, if you're in grief of something, you know, you right. have to go, okay, all right. And I've grieved that loss now. Now, the choices that I make now are up to me. So what am I seeing? Mm -hmm. What am I seeing before you react? What am I seeing that's out there that I want to go in that direction? So it's right. not just about getting employed. It's about doing something you feel that this is your next chapter. And this is yeah. the book, so to speak, that you want to belong to. So. Exactly. And we do it for you. Yeah exactly you're not alone you help them right through it some people are very confident and get it very quickly and some people not but that the whole point is is that you're going to build their confidence as they go through it exactly yeah thank you so much it was so great to meet you thank you for having me on your show my pleasure I look forward to connecting and keeping up with you you're great well what you're doing is definitely very important <laughs> and and uh um more people need to use it as i said both sides people looking and the companies it's very very important so i will be speaking about the show a lot in the future so oh. thank you so much annie thank you take care until next time folks remember it's the power is in within you you don't like where you're at right now it's up to you to change it and this is a brilliant way of doing it making a real where you really show the real you and the experiences that you've had and what you're looking for and to make it uplifting and fun and engaging where somebody really wants to get to know you and this is now your chapter um you write it it's up to you so until next time bye for now we hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.